Look out below! The U.S. dollar is crashing! Crashing, don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know? <laughs> Somebody, uh... <laughs> it's just, I can't... I can't take it. It's, oh my goodness. You'll see the, the boot birds on this comment, on this video here. You see them on LinkedIn. You see them just... It's so embarrassing. I just... I don't know what it is about these people who have this significant need for the U.S. dollar to crash when the evidence is just it hasn't and it's not. It could. I, mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just debating these people on LinkedIn. I'm trying to watch by say, you know, they think Social Security is a raw deal. We'll do another video about that. And I'm just like, you don't even know how it works, dude. It's, oh, it's mind boggling. And other people here are like, let's see. I'm going to show you this comment. It's funny. There you go. Think, all right, so this is some of my video I did yesterday about 5% government bonds. And here's Scuba Phil. Fool's gold! Buy the six-month T-bill. We have a deficit of $2 trillion a year. By 2030, our debt will be 175% of GDP. At this, that point, we'll be unable to tax or print our way out of this. And then I said to this good Japan, Jeff G says, Japan is at 225% debt to GDP, and they're still functioning. And they've been like that for years and years and years. They'll be able to fun, we'll be able to tax and print our way out of this because what twenty five trillion dollars of debt that wasn't enough so there's gonna be some mad what's the magic number forty trillion dollars of debt what's the magic number there scuba Phil give me give it to me give it to me baby what's the magic number uh, the argument was the debt to GDP ratio would put us in default then Jeff points out Japan and people want to deflect that by saying apples and oranges. Don't use the debt to GDP ratio as a reason for American default debt because a proven debt to GDP does not prove that. But then we got, uh, I don't know, I just, it's, it's, uh, my goodness. So watch this. I'm going to show you something else here. Watch this. Um, hold on a sec. So here's Denny when I said the government bonds are no, and we'll get into what I'm just talking about a second. He said, no risk. Did you make this video 10 years ago? Government bonds have no risk. No risk. Default, there's no risk of default, no risk not paying your premium, not paying the interest. There is literally no risk. Government bonds are the risk-free investment. All right, so let's do this. Here's this guy. It's going to default. I don't trust the bond market for the next three months. There are my 10 years. Hard to get the interest when the prism has been stolen through evaporation and theft. <laughs> right here. You're a fool to believe there's no risk. There's always a risk. There's always mitigated risk, but no such thing as no risk. All right, well, that's idiotic. We're talking investments. Government bonds are the risk-free investment. All right. So we hear all these people perpetually, then I'm debating on this thing on LinkedIn, which I won't show you, but about the social security. It's just all these people need something to be pissed off about. And I don't want to be pissed off because the reality is that they're wrong. I'm right. I'm right. So let me just share with you this. I'm going to show it to you once and forever, once and for all. End of story. The U.S. dollar is not being crushed. It's just not. <laughs> just, it's, it's so stupid. The purchasing power of the dollar has not dropped. I'll prove it to you. Again, if you haven't, don't believe me, buy my book, Relax and Retire. I'll, I prove it in there. The purchasing power of the U.S. dollar has not declined. Because there's two sides of the equation. is the income it takes to purchase stuff versus the cost to purchase stuff. You can't just look at one without the other. You got to look at what is the income source in which to buy things. Not just what is the cost to buy things, what is the income source to buy things. Ah, it's so frustrating. On my newspapers.com, I just looked at ground beef for 1975. We got about a buck, buck 10, buck 19, something like that for ground beef. Why would you buy uh, extra lean ground beef? Don't ground beef, don't do that. We like fat, we like the we like taste in our food. So don't buy extra lean food. That's just dumb. Don't do that. Uh, we want the fast stuff, 80-20, baby. Anyway, so you can see we're just going to use basically buck ten here for uh, ground beef. All right, we're going to look at, now we're going to come over here. Look at median income in 1975. It was 13720 All right, 13720 So we're going to say, we're going to take our trusty thing here. We're going to say median income, 13720 And we're just, for simplicity, you can use a buck for ground beef. It'll just be easier for me. 13720 a dollar. All right. Right there, thirteen seven twenty a dollar. That's the income, and that's the price of ground beef for a pound. All right, let's take a look now. Now we're gonna go meet an income two thousand and twenty-two, and we're gonna see it's uh, oh, where to go seventy four seventy four thousand five eighty. We're just gonna say let's say seventy four thousand five eighty. All right. So the median income has gone from nineteen seventy five to uh, two thousand twenty two. Has gone from uh, seven. Four five eighty divided by 
13720. That's gone up by 5.4 times. All right. Five, small now, 5.4 times. X, whatever that is. So it's increased by 5.4 times. All right. So now let's go over to price of ground beef in 2022, shall we? Let's see. Let's see what the price of ground beef in 22 is, shall we? See, it's about $4.80 price of ground beef, a pound of ground beef in 2022. All right, so retail, U.S. retail price of ground beef, about $4.80. All right, so we take our trusted calculator here, and uh, we say, <laughs> just as, oh, it's just fun proving the naysayers wrong. I don't even need a calculator to figure that out. So that means the price of ground beef has gone up by 4.8 times. Hmm. Huh. The price of meat and income has gone up by 5.4. The price of ground beef has gone up by 4.8. Has the dollar collapsed? Has your purchasing power dropped? No, it has not. That's just stupid. It's silly, and people are going to say, "But, but, but, how about this?" They're going to always, "But how about my?" They're going to say, "A house and a car." All right. Well, we know for a fact the regulation on the car industry and the home industry adds another 25 to 35 percent on the cost. In fact, I was just reading the other day about uh, we we're trying to mandate more EVs in Michigan and Maine and stuff, and that's just going to increase the price of of car. It's just regulation is does increase the cost, but it's not because a dollar collapses because it increases the cost, man. Because your stupid regulation. That's just a fact. I would love to hear these people hark against harp against regulation as opposed to the dollar collapsing because the dollar hasn't collapsed. I mean, come on. Here's the price of a dozen eggs in 1970. It was 70 cents per, 1975, 70 cents per dozen. All right. I just bought some, uh, I keep doing that. I just bought some uh, uh, two dozen eggs at Costco for four thirty nine. I mean, and then we, and they say, well, the price of a home was the average price. What was the average size of a home in 1975? Do you want to know? It's about 1,400 square foot. The average home now is about 2,400 square feet. I mean, the car has heated seats, has all this fancy schmancy good time rock and roll stuff. Back then, you had to roll your window down. You didn't have air conditioning. Yeah, I just I was watching an old video from late. It was uh, Ward uh, Cleaver. He was uh, doing some video on, on a sales, how to sell cars. He goes, well, this one has a heater, Mrs. Smith. Do you want a heater in your car? Yes, Ward, I want a heater. wasn't Ward, but it's like he's doing a roll. I want a heater. Okay, well, this one has a heater. Never mind. You got to do this. No air condition. You know, never, no freaking Bluetooth. No rear view window. No heated seats. Heated steering wheel. <laughs> I mean, dude, you can, look, man, I, you got to do what you got to do. Maybe I'm a glass, a glass half full kind of guy. I'm sitting there thinking, wait a second. So our income has gone up. The price of goods have gone up. That means the dollar is crashing. Okay. The, the dollar itself is not indicative of your, your lifestyle. It's just not. What's indicative of your lifestyle is your income relative to the things you buy. And as such, the income relative to the things you buy has actually, stood, actually gone up above most cost of most goods. It's just a factor. As I talked about my book here, you can I mean, look at like air travel. You can look at kilowatt hours. You, just it's, it's the price per kilowatt hour. It's just a fact. You can say the dollar's collapsing. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, in that case, we have more dollars in which for it to collapse, which is we're a net benefit. Yeah. Love your thoughts. It's silly. Don't forget if you like to like these uh, rants, we go live on locals once every Wednesday. If you like these stuff, you want to buy me a cup of coffee, buy me a cup of coffee. Both links are in the doobie duke. We'll see ya.